One in 13 people in the U.S. has asthma. The chronic condition makes it harder for people to breathe. And here in the South, where textiles run deep, the humidity is so thick, people have an even higher risk of having an asthma attack. In this To Your Wellbeing report, WFMY News 2's Tracy McCain talked with a Cone Health doctor about the risk factors and the new treatments to manage asthma. <sighs> Peggy Clow is breathing easy now, but not too long ago, the Guilford County mom struggled for air. Not being able to catch my breath, and you get to a point where you're coughing so bad you're gagging. Peggy often felt winded and felt a painful tightness in her chest. Take some nice big deep breaths for me. Shortness of breath turned into wheezing and an emergency. Wheezing is sort of an exhaled musical sound. You'll hear that loud, labored breathing during an asthma attack. As airways tighten, it's harder to get air in and out. And in Peggy's case, that was happening almost every 30 days. Peggy was, was getting treatment for her asthma with exacerbations with prednisone and antibiotics almost every month, and it was really interfering with her quality of life. And so we sat down and kind of really re-examined what her triggers would be um, and, and adjusted her inhaler therapy to try and get that under better control. Dr. Nikita Desai specializes in lung conditions at Labauer Pulmonary Care. Have you had to use your rescue inhaler at all? Asthma runs in families and can be related to smoking or secondhand smoke. Air pollution pollution and industrial chemicals too. She says all sorts of environmental factors trigger asthma, including where you live. Greensboro is actually a city that consistently ranks amongst the worst for asthma control across the country. And that's based on? Based on looking at the number of times a patient has to come to the emergency department or needs uh, rescue medications like prednisone for their treatment. Allergies can set off symptoms too. Here in North Carolina, we are lucky to have beautiful trees and beautiful flowers. We also have heat and humidity in the summer. And all of these things can contribute, contribute to poor asthma control. We also look at things like uh, air quality and socioeconomic status, which, which play heavily in asthma control. Infections from viruses or bacteria can also cause asthma to flare up. Whether that's allergies or infection or other medical conditions. And generally what happens is that trigger goes into your lungs and causes a narrowing of your airways. Opening them up requires medical treatment, mostly through rescue inhalers. Severe cases require steroids, antibiotics, albuterol, and often a trip to urgent care. I was on steroids all the time, I was on antibiotics all the time, and my body could not fight it back. And I just really think that eventually it would have just gone to being on an oxygen tank all the time. Dr. Desai says there are new ways to keep it from getting to that point. In the last five years, we've had a lot of breakthroughs in asthma treatment. These are new medications that were never available to a lot of our patients who have had asthma as children, so a lot of them may not know that these treatments are out there and available. Maintenance inhalers like Flovent keep lungs calm when exposed to environmental triggers. The medication Dupixent also improves breathing and prevents severe asthma attacks. An inhaler in the morning. I take an Allegra tablet for allergies, and then I take the Depixient shot every two weeks. And that is what really helped me go over the bridge. All right, so you just heard one patient's story about how they have a happy, healthier life despite their asthma. We want to answer your common questions about warning signs and symptoms with Dr. Nikita Desai from Labauer Pulmonary Care with Cone Health. So she's going to answer common questions, let you know when it's time to see a doctor. So let's start with just the very common thing, like the risk factors. What are some things that could make it more likely for someone to develop asthma? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Historically, Greensboro has ranked amongst the highest for patients with poorly controlled asthma in the country. So this is just such an important issue for people in the triad. Um, and I'll start by saying that it's a pretty common misconception that asthma is just a disease for children. Uh, it certainly can occur in childhood and for some people can persist into adulthood. Uh, but sometimes it can be just a brand new disease for adults. So don't think that just because you're not someone who had childhood asthma that you, you're in the clear. Uh, certainly family history and a history of childhood disease is something we consider. So if you've got someone in your family who has asthma or allergic diseases, that's something to consider. Smoking is another big one. You may have a personal history of smoking, which could factor in, but what we call passive smoke exposure or secondhand smoke exposure is also a risk factor. One of the biggest misconceptions for passive smoke exposure is actually that, you know, if someone's living in your house, 
they'll tell me, oh, well, they smoke in the other room or they smoke outside. That's still very much considered passive smoke exposure. Mm -hmm. Because um, the smoke then gets into all the fibers of the couch and clothing and things of that nature. Exactly, exactly. And then we also consider, you know, as I mentioned before, allergic disorders. So uh, diseases like seasonal allergies, asthma, those things really run together uh, with eczema as well. So those are things to consider. Another thing I wanted to mention would be like workplace uh, related occupational uh, exposures. So here in the triad, we have a history of having textile uh, factories. We have a lot of farming communities. We also have, of course, a history of tobacco factories. And so all of those things and exposure to all those things could certainly predispose you for asthma. Okay. So if someone has asthma, maybe what, what are some of the symptoms that might tip them off so that they don't get it confused with something else like allergies or something else? Yeah, there's certainly overlap of symptoms. So people can have coughing and allergies can coexist with asthma. So that can be confusing. The most common symptoms for asthma to consider would be chest tightness, difficulty breathing, wheezing, coughing. And, you know, those are the classic symptoms, but the hallmark of asthma is really that it's a chronic, episodic, and triggered disease. And so we break that down, chronic meaning it's going on for a long time. It's not just something that's happening for a week, a week or two. This is something that's persisting, persisting for months to years. Episodic means that there's something that's triggering your asthma, triggering these symptoms. Maybe you're always around a certain exposure or a certain place or a certain time of year. And, you know, those are really the important factors, you know, to know that it comes and goes mm -hmm. is an important hallmark of asthma. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're, the first question we're gonna be is, okay, when do we need to see a doctor if we have some of these warning signs? We're gonna answer that question and much more when we come back.